What's up everybody? So uh, today is a very special day in mine and my wife's uh, relationship. Uh, today, six years ago, I met Laura Jean Fitzel. And uh, the process of meeting her was uh, I was an evangelist, uh, I was basically is a traveling preacher, uh, just somebody that kind of travels all around the United States and uh, preaches different meetings and stuff like that. And when I wasn't traveling, like during the winter times, stuff like that, um, I did construction. I still do construction. And uh, we used to uh, build buildings, we used to just do a whole bunch of stuff. So anyways, I had been working and a man had called me in to do a rather large uh, sheetrock uh, or hanging drywall uh, job and we were to finish it out, uh, finish the whole inside of the building out, uh, paint it and different things of that nature and so we did. Um, that being said, the first night of that uh, before that started anyways, it was a Sunday night and um, I had, we had been in revival with a man named Brother Johnny Hopgood out of Russellville, Arkansas and he had uh, spoke a word to me, he said your life is fixing to drastically change. I didn't know how big of a change he was talking, but he, uh, I, I went to church that Sunday night and one of my dear friends, Brother Jorge from you know, Neosho, Missouri, he used to go to Brother Link's church. He looked at me and he said, man, he said, when are you going to get married? And I said, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I, uh, I just, I didn't know. I had kind of given up on looking for a girl. I mean, I was uh, busy working. I was busy preaching and I was just waiting for God to bring me a girl. So I, uh, I went home that night and my aunt calls me and she said to me she said uh philip uh, there's we're in revival down here in old in uh, kilgore texas and by the sam snow's church would like uh there's a girl down here that we think you ought to come meet and i told her i said no way it's an 11 hour drive there's there's no way a nine hour drive something like that I said, there ain't no way I'm coming down there. No, I, I got this drywall job I'm supposed to do. I said, there, no, I'm not interested in any girls right now. I'm just seeking the Lord. That's that's about it. She said, no. She said, most of my family used to call me Junior. Um, but she said, Junior, she said, please. She said, if you've ever listened to me, please come down here. We really think you need to meet this girl. So I said, okay, Joey, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do it. And so... Me and my brothers, we got up. It was about 6 o'clock that morning. We got up, got on the road. Um, the whole way down there, I was like, Lord, if this ain't your will, don't let her like me. Don't let her, you know, think anything about me. But, uh, you know, just let her just kind of, you know, I guess not pay me much attention. And uh, that, that whole day, I prayed the entire same prayer. Prayed the exact same thing all day long. And we got there, I think I got there about 5 o'clock. It was just before church started. I was nervous as all get out. And um, we uh, got to talking. Uh, I showed a picture of Laura, and I was, I was like, wow. Ain't no way this girl's going to like me. I'm, you know, uh, I've never been really good looking to me. And uh, I was like, there ain't no way this girl's going to like me at all. And so I kind of, you know, was expecting the worst. But, um, yeah, uh, we got ready. And uh, I had picked out an outfit or whatever. My uncle, he looked at me and said, no. He said, that ain't going to work. He said, you got to put something else on. And so I, I, I did whatever. It was a, I think it was like a brown suit or something like that and a different color tie. But anyways, uh, yeah, and then service started. And uh, we, I went in for prayer meeting. We got in there about 6.30. We prayed till about 7. And when I came out, there she was. Okay, so now that Mr. Still has told his part, I have a guest so that may be in and out. I hope it's not distracting. I'm going to try to hurry and make this quick. So I'm just going to jump right into it. I was 18, and I was working at Hobby Lobby. And it was January of 2016, and I was 
not sure if I wanted to continue working there. The hours were terrible, which led to me being having time to be able to go to Texas, where um, I grew up with a family, I'm gonna call them the Smith family, just for privacy sake. Um, and I was very close to them and their daughter and her husband pastored down there. And they came up and she was like, hey, you haven't come down to Texas yet, why don't you come down? I was like, oh great, I have time off. Let's look at flights. I got $100 from Dulles to Dallas and then Dallas back to Dulles. So I went down not expecting anything. I had never had a boyfriend before. And I, that Sunday, it was really great to get away and just kind of clear my mind and figure out what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go in life. And that Sunday was a really awesome monumental point in my life as far as um, just like surrendering fully to God and just asking him to lead me and guide me in what he would have me to do. Um, <laughs> hi. And so that next Monday night, which was <laughs> Monday the 18th, <laughs> he thinks he's funny. Um, Mr. Steele came down and we met and it was super awkward. We met right before church and it just, it was terrible. But after church, we ended up talking for two hours, which I had never... Mama. He's going... Don't do that, please. Um, I had never talked to any guys, and so he was the first guy I ever talked to. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I'd never dated any guys or really talked to any guys, so that was two hours. was insane. And then, so he went home. The next day was Tuesday. I went back to work. He called my mom asking if we could just talk and become friends. And so I'm going to stop here, and then we'll jump in together and finish the story together because I don't want to do it by myself. So... This brings us to now, where we are now. So after I left, or after you went home, and I went home, did you already tell them how you got home? So I flew home and I went back, went back to work on Tuesday. That's where we just left off. Okay, okay, so I went you had back called home. called mom. I went back home and um, I had a lot, so I did construction and whatnot. And I started working or whatever, and me and Laura, we just started texting back and forth all day long. I got, we did text a lot before we, did, we talked, didn't we? We did. I got nothing done. <laughs> Hardly anything done. The customer, he came in, and he was like, wow, Philip, I was expecting more to be done. And I was like, well, yeah, I apologize, you know. So, anyways, um, I called my soon-to-be mother-in-law. I called her and uh, I said, um, you know, would it be a possibility of uh, me talking to your daughter? And uh, she said, well, I think Laura is, is quite smitten with you or something like that, didn't she? Quite interested. Uh, quite yeah. interested in you or something like that. And I, man, that just made my heart go, woo, glory. So, but uh, yeah, yeah. And then we started talking and whatnot. We did not see each other until April. So from yeah. January 18th to April 4th or 5th or something, yeah. we didn't see each other. Um, we FaceTimed once yeah. or twice. Yeah. And when he came down to Virginia in April is when he asked me to be his girlfriend. So every time, this is just a little, my wife is a very, very private person. And um, every time that we would FaceTime, she would put a sheet up behind her bed and she would sit on the floor, prop up the camera, just like, you know. I forgot about that. <laughs> she'd set up the camera, prop it up, and she would sit in one place. Like, she would not move. And we talked for a good two hours, at least Let's two be honest, hours. It, there were times we talked for like five and six hours. We would talk to them all the night. We would hang up FaceTime because her mom would say, you know, it's time to go to bed. And we would hang up FaceTime. Don't tell all our secrets. Well, we're already married. They don't care. So we would hang up on FaceTime. And then I'd call her back. And we would talk till 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And then we'd hang up, you know, and go to bed or whatever. Most of the time, though, we would, you know, we whenever my mother-in-law said, get off the phone, it was time to get off the phone. So we would. Even though I was a, an adult, I still lived at home. So yeah, I respect yeah, the rules. Yeah. So. That's true. He asked me to be his girlfriend in April. Yep. Fast forward to, we were best friends at the, that point. At we that had point, already become yeah. super best friends. And so from April to August, August, he took the church here in Illinois, started pastoring. Well, but back backtrack just a little bit. There in July, 
she calls me and she says we're going or I, i'm going to be taking a trip to brazil was it belize, belize. she said i'm going to be taking a trip to belize and um at that time i was going down towards i was evangelizing a lot and um i was i had come to illinois um some friends of ours had called and said there's a church up in illinois they need somebody to fill in for a sunday are you going to be free and i said well i'll have to to move some stuff around but yeah i think i'll be okay and so i came up here preached that sunday morning sunday night and sister strange which was the original pastor's wife she pulled me off to the side and she said brother Steele." she said we think that we would like for you to come preach a revival for us so that was about the beginning of G of, of uh, july and then towards the ending of july we came back up here preached a revival for him that wednesday night sister strange walked up to me and she said have you ever thought about pastoring and i said no i said i'm an evangelist uh, I travel, I preach, um, different things of that nature. I'm, I'm not interested in pastoring. And she said, well, I want you to pray about it. And so I said, well, I'll, I'll pray about it, but I'm pretty sure, you know, what's, what's going to be said is, you know, what's going to be done is going to be done. So that night I called Laura because I called her every night at 930. No, every once in a while I'd be 15 minutes late, 10 minutes late or whatever. But usually it was right at 930 I would call her if we were in service yeah depending if we were in church or not um that night i called her and i told her um what was going on in my head and what sister strange had said and you said you had a conversation with your mom so we got off the phone and i told mom i said i think he's gonna take her I, I, I know he is, but I'm not going to say anything because I, in my opinion, to sway his decision. And she never did. Never, she never, never said, said anything. anything. Um, that Thursday night, I prayed. Friday night, I prayed. And I said, Lord, if it's your will, then show me. And there was a peace. God gave me a peace. And I knew instantly there was, there was the Lord's will for me to take the church here. So I called Sister Strange that Saturday morning and I told her, I said, I'm going to take, I'll take the church. Um, but I've got a few revivals that I need to run. They've been scheduled for a while. Let me go ahead and run them. And then we'll start pastoring here again, or we'll start pastoring come mid-August. So now coming back to where Laura was going into Belize, I was going down into Arkansas. And there's a little section down there at the church that we're staying at. They have no service at all. And so for the entire time that she was in Belize, that I was in Arkansas, she didn't have no service. I barely had service. And I remember distinctly getting so frustrated because Monday night I, I hadn't talked to her. Tuesday night I hadn't talked to her. We had one conversation. We have one conversation. And a that, few Instagram messages. Yeah, over that entire I had, week. I got Wi-Fi at one point. Yeah. So we went to Lee City. Yeah. We had one conversation the entire week, didn't we? Yeah. But as I look back at it now, it was perfect because it was a chance for me to get a hold of God and to figure, to find out for sure whether this was God's will for me. And during that week, God spoke to me in so many different ways. The Lord gave me some promises, promises that we're holding true to today. And then in December, December the 14th, yeah. I took Lord. We had back in, in January, we had been talking and she made a statement to me. She said, um, you know, I, I love the Lincoln Memorial at night. If you've ever been to D.C., you know how awesome it looks with a reflecting pool and all the lights. And if there's not a lot of people beautiful so i i looked at her and i that th always stuck in my head so i i took her down to uh to ruth's chris well i, I acted because we were supposed to go to church it was on wednesday night and we were supposed to go to her church and we were all dressed up and i took a turn to go to washington dc instead of going towards where the church was and i knew at that point I knew at that point. <laughs> Something's wrong here. Yeah, we were heading in opposite directions. Yeah, yeah. I knew. And we were heading towards D.C. Yeah. 
So yeah. I took her to uh, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse there in DC. Um, I'll let her tell you what she thought of the dinner. What did you think of the dinner? Well, the poor waiter ruined the whole thing because he's like, congratulations. I'm assuming you said yes. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's not asked yet. And he's like, oh my goodness. Stuck my foot in my mouth. So at that point I was, you know, pretty sure. Um, I was so mad was... I wanted to slap that guy. <laughs> I wanted to just slap him into kingdom come. I should insert a picture here. There were roses on the table, our initials in, in um, confetti, and then I also want to insert a picture of after we were engaged, and you'll see how beautiful the scenery is. So. Then we were engaged until May. We got married. Do you have our wedding date? Mm -hmm. May 6th, 5, 6, 17. <laughs> 5, 6, 17. That's the only way I'm able to remember it. I'm so glad we chose an easy wedding date. <laughs> 5, 6, 17 is our wedding date. And yeah. then um, fast forward almost two, or a little over three years later. Well, but we went to, going back to the engagement night. I mean, all the struggles that went down with that. We'll have to make a whole video of that because that was really funny. Yeah, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law. Both of them, or my future mother-in-law and sister-in-law, both of them got lost in traffic and got messed up in their driving and all that Running stuff. Running across the lawn of the White House. Yeah, well, not of the White House, but... The, they were over at the White House lawn. Oh, were they? Yes. Wow. Mom was in boots and heels and they were trying to run over. Well, but I'll tell you one thing. When she said yes, it blessed my heart. I mean, she was... Such a relief, right? She was the prettiest thing there that night. I guarantee it. But um, then, then May, or going into our wedding, uh, but we went to, after our wedding, we went to uh, Puerto Vallarta for our honeymoon, spend it, uh, we were there for seven days, Just about seven or eight days, I think it was, and then we resumed pastoring here afterwards. And then we went on many adventures up until right now. Yeah. One of them being Israel, which was three years ago today. Yeah. We left for Israel. Yeah. And then um, James was born in 2020, and now we're in 2022. So. We've and, been through a lot of ups and downs. Yes. A lot of ups and downs. The Lord's been there the whole way. This is also our 100th video, so we're excited to post this tomorrow. <laughs> I can't believe we made it this far. It's probably the longest video that we have on file, too. So. And we're proud. If you've stayed here this long, go ahead and <laughs> drop a comment, drop a like, yes. subscribe to our channel, turn the notifications on, tell us about what you thought about it, uh, give us some ideas of some videos that you want us to do uh, coming up here in the future. Uh, do you want us to go up to Chicago? Um, we're going to be going towards uh, Pennsylvania here in a couple weeks. Uh, what do you want us to do while we're there? Do you want us, to, you know, give us some ideas. Uh, you've you've stayed this long. You might as well go ahead and invest some. We also have our video coming up of um, what our sponsored video. So there we go. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. So to whoever sponsored mm -hmm. us, we say thank you. You are the bomb. You're amazing. And truly, if you have stuck around this far, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> <laughs> thank thank you much. I think that's a wrap. It's a wrap. Cut. We'll see you next time.